All right, Periscope, what's up? Greg House, Thursday morning, second time around. Is this connection better? We doing better this time? All right, you like the music, okay. Intensity, high energy, high energy Thursday. This connection is better, okay, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Welcome to the broadcast, Leaderscope with Greg House. Good morning, great to have you here, Thursday morning. We're past the halfway point. Good afternoon in the Netherlands. I saw South Carolina, New York City, Merrillville, Virginia Beach. Good morning, good morning. Great to have you here. God bless you. High Energy Thursday. Got your coffee going, all right? We got the coffee going. Got breakfast going. I had my oatmeal this morning. Michigan is ready for talk back, okay? Veronica in California, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, got the coffee going. Egg sandwich. Russia, good afternoon in Russia. Country Club Hills, good morning. Thank you for inviting followers. Just click on the man there on the screen. You can invite some followers, come on with you. Thank you for the hearts. Every time you, you uh, tap the screen, you release hearts. Appreciate that very much. Hazelnut coffee, okay. Hazelnut coffee. We got the coffee going. We're ready today. Everybody's ready to go. All right, all right. Amen, 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 amen. Thursday morning, it's a great day. It is a great day. We are ready for some good things today. And uh, I want to believe God for his very best to be manifested in your lives today. I want to trust him for that and uh, believe that this is going to be a, a wonderful, productive day for you. Productive day for you. Um, welcome. Great to have you here. I see Leah here. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Everybody's got their coffee. Hola, como esta? We got the coffee going. We got, you want my fridge? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you want my fridge? We want, why do you want to see my fridge? Okay. All right, all right, all right. Uh, thank you for the hearts. Thank you for tapping the screen. You release those hearts. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting people to come on. Appreciate it. Um, this is Thursday, and as we've been designating themes this this week and last week, we call this Talk Back Thursday, and so I just want I want to have you talk to me today, and I want to refer back to some things that uh, we were covering yesterday on being a perfectionist. That seemed to really resonate with a lot of people. I had a lot of feedback on that, and uh, even last night when I was at Cornerstone, I had several people uh, come up to me and say that they had watched the broadcast yesterday and how impactful it was with them, how it got them thinking about some things uh, concerning themselves, this perfectionist thing versus excellence. And so uh, I want to just get back into that for a few minutes today. So let me ask you some questions. Are you ready to respond? And if there's any foolishness going on with the comments, you guys can block them, okay? Go ahead and block them. Just click on the comment. It'll give you the option to block, and you can go ahead and do that. Um, so let me just ask you some questions, and I want to get some feedback from you today. First of all, we talked about a stronghold, and, and we recognize that there can be strongholds in our minds and in our emotions, and we recognize that strongholds scripturally, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, are always connected with the mind and with the emotions. Strongholds have something to do with our mentality, our mindset. And so as you consider a stronghold, how would you define a stronghold? What is a stronghold to you? How do you define a stronghold? How do you define a stronghold? How do you do that? So give me some comments on that. I was defining a stronghold as a firmly fortified fortress. A firmly fortified fortress. Somebody says mental anguish. Somebody says poverty. Poverty can be a stronghold, but what is a stronghold? How would you define a stronghold? Being firmly bound. Somebody who is firmly bound, okay? Oh, uh, Lord, 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 help us. Uh, incorrect thinking toward yourself and toward God, okay? Lifting, lifting up thoughts against the knowledge of God, all right? Uh, something that holds you down, a, a way of thinking, an idol, anything that redirects your heart from God. Okay, very good. A set of beliefs. 
So these are all really good comments, good thoughts about what a stronghold might be. You're unable to change your thought pattern. It's a paradigm. I like that word paradigm. A paradigm is the way you see life. It's the way you see what's going on around you. It's like looking, like I have my glasses on right now, and I see, I see things through the lens of my glasses. That's the way a paradigm is. It is a lens through which you see life, and it affects everything that you see. Anything or a person that has an ungodly hold on your mind, your emotions, that's a stronghold, okay? An incorrect mindset, uh, self-protection, okay? A setback, a barricade uh, that takes the power of God to move, a closed mind, okay? The way you have been raised, yeah, that's where strongholds can come from, the way you were raised. Unable to walk in love, Fear, anger, lying, those can be strongholds. Those can be strongholds. But I was looking for a definition of a stronghold. Somebody says Psalm 31. So we'll have to check that out a little bit later. Psalm 31. So thank you for those comments on strongholds. Now, yesterday we were talking about this thing of perfectionism being a stronghold in our lives. And, and I told you that perfectionism can come from the natural side of your life. Like for me, I'm an only child. And so I think that that could go towards developing a stronghold of perfectionism in my life simply because I didn't have any brothers or sisters uh, that I had to mess with. Uh, your home environment, the established patterns that you develop in your life over time as you're coming up, all of that is from the natural side, from the natural side. From the spiritual side, you have walls being built up over the passing of time and through life experience, and, and those walls, that firmly fortified fortress, can also take on demonic energy, and the demonic energy will take advantage of opportune moments in order to bring you down. And so we have the development of these strongholds of perfectionism in our lives. Now, I want to ask you, when you consider perfectionism, perfectionism, how would you define it? How do you define perfectionism? Somebody understands being an only child. Okay, are you an only child? Okay. Pride is connected to perfectionism. Okay, all right. Two people saying pride. All right, perfectionism. And I want to say perfectionism it's being approval driven, okay? Having things your way, all right? Perfectionism is a stronghold because it is lifting itself up against the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God says only God is perfect. And so why are we trying to be perfect? We're never going to make it, are we? Not allowing for grace to come. Yeah, haughtiness, working for identity rather than, oh, I lost that one. Okay, you have to have everything right. That's, that's a kicker right there. Perfectionism is the demand to have everything right. Uh, thought patterns of the mind, okay? Always needing to do more, okay? A, an objective of excellence. Now we want to compare perfectionism with excellence. There's a difference between the two. So maybe give me some ideas on that. You said perfectionism is performance motivated. A fear of failure, based on insecurity, okay? Being error-free, my way or the highway. I like that one. Stubbornness. Okay, all of these are great comments for perfectionism. Now, how would you compare perfectionism to excellence? You said it's control. It's based in rejection. You're scared of change, okay? See, perfectionism is going to regard anything short of perfection as unacceptable. You're not going to accept anything if it's not perfect, it's, it's unrealistic, demanding goals that nobody can live up to. That's what perfectionism is all about. Excellence would be the best you can do, okay? All right, very good. Fear motivated, not love motivated. That would be perfection. Ego driven, that's perfection. Your best plus God's grace. That's the excellence part. Excellence is evolving. Very good. I like that comment. Doing things to the utmost is excellence. Striving for more is excellence, even if you make mistakes getting there, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Again, how would you compare perfectionism with excellence? Perfectionism with excellence. Let me give you this list 
that I read through yesterday from this book called Moving Past Perfect by Thomas Greenspan. The list says this, all right? Now watch this. Somebody says doing excellence, uh, excellence is doing your best with a good heart. Okay, watch the difference now between the two. Excellence is risk. Perfection is fear. Excellence is effort. Perfection is anger and frustration. Hey, Latvia. Good afternoon in Latvia. Excellence is openness to being wrong. Perfection is having to be right. Excellence is spontaneity. Perfection is control. Excellence is flow. Perfection is pressure. Excellence is confidence. Perfection is doubt. Had to block somebody there. Thank you. Uh, excellence is a journey. Perfection is a destination. Excellence is acceptance. Perfection is judgment. Excellence is encouraging. Perfection is criticizing. Excellence is surrender. Perfection is consuming. I like that last one. Surrender versus consuming. When you're going after excellence, you're going to surrender. When you're going after perfection, it's going to consume you and you begin to consume everything and everybody around you. Now give me some more ideas. The difference between perfectionism and excellence. Give me your thoughts. Give me your thoughts. Give me some more feedback on that. And by the way, I just, I just put this list on my Facebook page and it's under the notes section on my Facebook wall. In fact, I think it's listed on my Facebook wall right now. So you could get that list off of there if you want to refer to it. Very, very good. What's the difference between excellence and perfectionism? Excellence and perfectionism. Somebody said, um, uh, we need the grace of God. Excellence is progressive, yeah. Excellence is progressive, where perfectionism really gets stuck on one thing. Um, we need the grace of God. The, the perfectionist, if you're looking for a perfectionist in the Bible, the perfectionists of the Bible were the Pharisees. The Pharisees were going after that perfectionism aspect that we're talking about. The Pharisees were into legalism, they were prideful, and they were very judgmental. And so if, if we're getting caught up in perfectionism, then we're moving toward that Pharisee kind of mindset. And I think we really want to avoid that at all costs because that's something that Jesus got very upset with. Perfection is frustrating. Excellence is steady. Okay, very good. We need the grace of God, right? We need the grace of God. We need his grace. Perfection sometimes can be a fruit of rejection, uh, trying to always feel good enough, okay? All right? Yeah, the Pharisees were hypocritical. So if we're getting into perfectionism, guess what that says about us? Interesting, huh? We will never be perfect. We can only strive for it. Now we're, But again, we don't want to strive for being perfect. We want to strive for excellence. That's where I want to steer us. We want to move toward excellence, not perfection. Not perfection. Let me give you a few scriptures on this, and this might stir your thinking as well. Isaiah, Isaiah 64 and verse 6. All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. That's for all of us. So Isaiah 64, 6 is letting us know that all of us have shortcomings. All of us have sin. All of us are lacking that perfection that we say we're trying to get to. We all lack that. Now, Psalm 18 and verse 30 says, As for God, his way is perfect. The way of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield for all who take refuge in him. So it is God who is perfect. His way is perfect. Yes, yeah, strive for excellence, not perfection. That's the point. We're striving for excellence. We're going after excellence, not perfection. Not perfection. So God's way... God's way is perfect. His way is perfect. Our way is not perfect. His way is perfect. 
His way is perfect. Psalm 18 and verse 32, it is God who arms me with strength and he makes my way perfect. He makes my way perfect. So this, this thing of perfection is something that God holds in his hand, and he is working that in our lives. Now, when it talks about perfection in the Bible, it's referring to the aspect of completion. We are complete in him. It doesn't mean that we are faultless. It doesn't mean we never make a mistake. It means that we are complete or we are whole in our God. It means that things in our lives are being brought to an expected end. We're making it to an expected end. In, in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48, Jesus said, You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. So when he says perfect there, he's not saying you never make a mistake. He's saying you must be complete. You must be whole in your life. You must be on the journey of coming to the expected end that God has purposed for your life. So you're moving in the purpose of God. That's the aspect of godly perfection. That's what Jesus means when he says, be perfect even as your heavenly Father is perfect. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 14 says, for by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. I like that. Excellence is an inward configuration. Perfection is outward. Oh, that's good. I like that. I like that. I like that. Jesus is God, my friend. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. He is God. He is God. Jesus is God. He is divine. And he loves us so very much. And he loves you. God bless you. Um, so Hebrews says, For by one sacrifice, Jesus has made perfect, complete, whole. He's made us complete. He's made us whole. He's bringing us to an expected end those who are being made holy. So we're in the process of being made holy. We're in this movement of sanctification. And while we are being sanctified, while we are being sanctified, we are coming to that place of wholeness and completion, what the Bible calls perfection. So in all of that, again, we are pursuing excellence. We're pursuing excellence and not perfection, okay? We're pursuing excellence and not perfection. Well, I hope this has been helpful to you today. Excellence is striving to be outstanding and extremely good, even if it comes short of the goal. Absolutely. Absolutely. I like that. I like that. Amen. We're going to be excellent. Hallelujah. We're going to be excellent. Listen, I appreciate you being on the broadcast with me today. Thank you for your feedback. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. Thanks for answering my questions. I appreciate it. I love you. I'm grateful for you. I trust that you're going to have a great day today, a productive day today, a day of excellence, a day of excellence. Yeah. High Energy Thursday. God bless you so much. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We'll be back tomorrow morning, 7.50 a.m. Central Standard Time. I'll see it. No, Central Daylight Time now. Central Daylight Time. There's a perfectionist thing, right? Central Daylight Time, 7.50 a.m. tomorrow morning. God bless you. Have a great day.